Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to rename SQL Server instance. And in this particular video, we'll be learning how to rename default instance of SQL Server, how to rename host of named instance of SQL Server, how to resolve remote login error after you rename the default instance of SQL Server or the host of named instance of SQL Server. You might run into an error that there are still remote logins for this SQL Server and how to resolve them. And finally, uh, I'll show you that how to create an alias in SQL Server if there is a requirement of uh, basically uh, renaming the instance of SQL Server. So first thing I wanted to tell you that uh, you can rename the default instance of SQL Server. When we talk about renaming the default instance of SQL Server, when you install SQL Server uh, on any host and uh, you uh, uh, install in uh, default instance that means that host name becomes the SQL server you can connect to SQL server using the host name of that particular application and let me show you real quick what host name I'm talking about if you go to the computer properties and this is the host name of this computer if I install SQL server default instance on this computer I can connect to SQL server using just this name via SQL Server Management Studio or any other client that can connect to SQL Server. So this is the host name. When we talking about renaming, we're basically talking about renaming the host name. If there is any reason that you have changed the computer name, which, uh, uh, ho which is hosting the SQL Server default instance or named instance, then how to resolve that, how to, how to basically tell SQL Server without in, uh, reinstalling that, uh, okay, I have changed my computer name, I have changed my host name, so pick up this new host name for me, and that is possible. Basically, uh, it's not possible to rename the SQL Server instance, which I'm talking about like uh, host name backslash SQL Server, I'll, I'll show you in a second. That is not possible. Let's go ahead and uh, let me show you, bring up the script, and then we'll talk about it. So let me open up the script. So what I'm talking about right here is that basically it's, it's impossible to change this particular part without reinstalling the SQL Server. You have to uninstall this uh, particular part right here uh, SQL Server test that is SQL Server instance and reinstall SQL Server instance if you wanted to go ahead and uh, rename your instance on that particular host. So this is my host name. This is my machine name. When you install SQL Server on a host name in a default mode, then you can go ahead and basically just give the host name and it'll, as it said right here, local, it'll go ahead and connect to SQL Server because that's you can only install one default instance on a machine uh, of SQL Server, whether it's a SQL Server 2012, SQL Server 2008, or 2014. So you can only install one uh, SQL Server default instance. That's the reason because it can go ahead and use the machine name and connect to SQL Server. And again, let me repeat it that you cannot in, uh, rename SQL Server instance right this part right here. Uh, but if this part changes, then how we rename, how we uh, uh, tell SQL Server. Right now, as you can see, that I'm connected with Dynamics AX Dev backslash SQL Test, and that means that uh, I'm I'm connected with host name backslash my SQL Server instance name. If this part changes, host name changes, then without reinstalling the SQL Server, how would I connect to SQL Server? Because um, if this changes, you cannot go ahead and just use the new name and without doing some configuration. And that's what we're going to learn in this particular demo, that what are those configuration that we would, if we we ought to change Dynamics AX Dev, which is the host name, then how our SQL Server default and SQL Server named instance will behave. So uh, up here, I don't have basically a SQL Server uh, default instance, So, but I'm going to go through with you right here, SP Drop Server. This is your old uh, host name. That means your old SQL Server, uh, old ho machine name. So if, you, if that's changed, then you can go ahead and drop that. That'll go in master database and drop that. And then you can add server and um, uh, add your new host name right here and it'll recognize that. You can go ahead, after running this particular script, you can go ahead and uh, connect to default instance using the new machine name. 
same with the sql server instance uh, if it's a named based then you have to drop the previous name this is the entry in master database right there that it will go ahead and let you connect that but once this is changed it will not know that how I can let you connect when you're putting the wrong SQL server so what do you need to do in in master database you need to basically go ahead and drop this server and change with the new host name and same SQL server instance as you can right here you notice that is the instance name remains the same but if host name changes where SQL Server instance, named instance is installed, you can go ahead and do that. And uh, sometimes you run into an issue that if you try to do that, it's a remote login issue. And uh, there is an error right here. Uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, this this is the area you will get uh, when you run sp underscore drop server that there are remote logins configured on this server in order to do that uh, it'll tell you that what remote login uh, configured then you can go ahead and uh, uh, do the same thing with sp underscore drop logins with the previous name and give those logins the new name right here this is the instance name in my case it's a uh, uh, SQL test so this is how you do it uh, as far as uh, instance uh, as far as a t-sql script goes uh, but i'm going to tell you a little bit trick now that uh, how you can uh, manage renaming not renaming exactly to deceive the system right here to creating changing this part right here you can name this part right here by creating sql server instance and you don't want to create sql server uh, alias uh, i'm sorry i meant to say alias so you don't want to create alias on a sql server where it's residing you want to create an alias let's say there is an application on sql server a and it's, it's trying to connect to uh, a sql server which is uh, a server b so you want to create go ahead and create an alias on SQL on server A let me go ahead and write this down so it make make it easier application app server is server A where there is no SQL server installed and DB server is server B now this this uh, up here all the application that reside on this server try to connect with server backslash instance this is your SQL server that uh, this all the application that's running on server a try to connect they they remember that this is the server that they want to connect now let's say that this is changed into server new backslash instance now these applications are going to basically fail unless you go ahead and uh, go into the configuration of those uh, application and tell those application that don't use this name anymore go ahead use this this name now let's say that there are 10 applications and your developers don't have basically time to go ahead and uh, change all the configuration of this uh, um, application you can do one thing right here create an alias of server new backslash instance this is your renamed server and you can create an alias I'm going to go ahead and put this that means that it can talk to each other so you can go ahead and create alias server backslash instance on this server on this server let me go ahead and do that on server a that is your application server so this server once you create the alias on this particular server then uh, whenever your application try to connect it'll go to alias it, it, it won't find this server right here and then it'll try to see that if there is an alias defined for this server that is uh, back behind the scene what's going on so if it finds the alias with this name is going to go ahead and uh, connect that but that alias is basically pointing to your new server so I'm going to show you that how to create an alias you need to install a couple of things couple of uh, um, components SQL server components on application server right here and then you'll be able to configure alias on SQL server so let's go ahead and do that and here is a uh, once you let me go in SQL server configuration
So this is my SQL Server 2014 configuration and you will get this option if you install native client 10.0 configuration 32 bit right here and SQL Server network configuration uh, I'm sorry, SQL Server Native Client 11.0 configuration 64 bit. If you install these two uh, components and when you do installation of SQL Server, you get a chance to install the, the configuration components and you will be able to install the native clients. You can also download native clients 11.0 and 32 bit and 64 bit and install on application server. So let's say that we have installed that. Up here you will see an uh, option right here, the alias. You need to go ahead and uh, uh, create a new alias. And new alias is my new alias. No, I'm going to go ahead let's say that this is the new alias right here you want to this is renamed everything is renamed and your application can't connect to your sql server so it's a ser server new instance that is your actual name right now currently of your sql server you want to go ahead go back to your previous name then you can go ahead and uh, connect with server instance right here this is the name of your alias should be so I'm going to go ahead and say dev uh, dynamics ax backslash SQL test. Okay, so this exists already. Just to uh, uh, let's say that I have changed it. Basically, it's new and uh, this is a different name right here i'm going to go ahead and just for the uh, for this demo keep in mind this is not the destination one this is the one that uh, you want to not change this was the previous configuration of your application so you want to keep that uh, configuration of your application so i'm going to go ahead and call it new just to show you that you can create with any name and your application will recognize that for this when you create an alias you do need um, the server name actual server name and the port number of SQL server so actual server name in my case is dynamics AX dev and right here my port number if you go in here TCP IP and all the way down here this is my port number so I'm going to go ahead and copy it by the way, when you're configuring it on application server, you need to know all this. You you can basically first get gather all this information and then start creating alias on application server. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So this is my um, server. You can put an IP address here, basically Dynamics AX Dev. If you don't want it to do the server name, you can put uh, an IP address here. So uh, what I'm going to do is apply. okay then go ahead and do the uh, uh, SQL native client because some of your application might be 32 bit some of your application might be 64 bit so it's always a good idea to go ahead and create both right here so I'm going to go ahead dynamics ax dev and I'm going to go ahead and dynamics ax dev new backslash SQL test hit apply okay let me go back and quickly see that is uh, dynamics ax new let me look at dynamics ax dev dynamics ax new so up here we made a mistake um, taking the dev out so dynamics ax new apply okay so now you can use this alias dynamics ax new backslash sql test to get into your sql server so let's go ahead and try this so this is our new as you can see that you know this is um, dynamics ax new is our alias and it went ahead and connected with our 
uh, dynamics ax dev and sql test that way we didn't have to rename this particular instance you can go ahead and basically call it let me disconnect here let's say that you wanted to just uh, let me go back and go to properties let's say you want to keep dynamics ax new dev and you wanted to do it sql dev instead you, this is renaming the instance not the instance basically creating an alias so this you can't change this needs to be actual server and let's go ahead and do the same thing and I'm going to go ahead and do dev <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and connect it with new name. Oh, hold on. We haven't changed this one. As you can see, it's connected with the new instance name. For you, it looked like it's a, re a renamed instance, but basically back behind the scene, it's an alias. And basically, this is how you can trick the system. Uh, um, I, you cannot uh, change the uh, instance name um, without creating basically alias. Uh, you cannot change the SQL Server instance name. You have to uninstall the previous instance and reinstall your SQL Server with the new named instance, and you can go back and reattach your databases or you restore your databases in every other object that you uh, such as logins and all the information and I hope this scenario and this video helped